Now, apart from the Women's Day and Women's Month celebrations, it's also Polio Awareness Week. And parents are being urged to ensure that their children are vaccinated against the virus. This, as the United States has reported its first case of polio in almost a decade. Authorities there warn that there could be many more people infected. To talk to us more about the disease is Dr. Kerrigan McCarthy from the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. For those who may not be aware of polio um, and its effects, maybe exactly explain what it is and who it is that it impacts the most. Uh, thanks, Rafiwa, for the um, opportunity to share a very important message um, with listeners. Um, polio is a vaccine-preventable disease. It uh, infects the lining of the gut and it causes paralysis. Um, it used to cause major outbreaks and epidemics. Um, the last one in South Africa was in 1955, and there are still people alive in South Africa who suffered from polio during those times. Unfortunately, polio, uh, despite the availability of a vaccine, has not been eradicated globally. Um, it's still uh, wild type polio occurs in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And more recently, much to our alarm, uh, cases have been identified in uh, Malawi and in Mozambique, in the northern part of Mozambique. These cases are genetically related to the cases uh, that have been um, molecularly sequenced and originate from Afghanistan and Pakistan. Then there's a second kind of polio called VDPV, and uh, these VDPV cases are found, um, unfortunately, through many cases that have been uh, many countries and areas in the world that have been disrupted, uh, where vaccination programs have been disrupted, um, including um, Central Africa, West Africa, um, the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen. And more recently, there have been cases imported uh, into uh, first world countries. Um, and this has been confirmed through identification of the same VDPV polio virus in wastewater. Um, reports from the United States suggest that because the virus has been found in wastewater, that there are in fact many more asymptomatic cases present uh, than uh, have been detected clinically. Now, one of the reasons for this is that uh, there are two kinds of vaccines for polio. Uh, the one is an oral vaccine, and this is given to infants when they're born and when they're six weeks old. And the second is an inactivated polio vaccine that's given as an injection with the six-week, 10-week, and 14-week injections. Now, the oral polio vaccine is highly effective at causing uh, sterilizing immunity, it causes gut immunity. And if a person um, ingests the polio virus or this VDPV polio virus uh, after they've received this vaccine, they will not be infected and they will not secrete the virus. But unfortunately, if a person has been vaccinated with the inactivated polio virus, they can still be infected with the polio virus if they are exposed to it. They will never develop polio disease or paralytic polio, but they will be able to shed the virus and therefore to infect others. Now, most likely what's happening um, in New York and also in the UK where, there was a case, um, where the virus was detected in wastewater is that many, in fact, the entire population has been vaccinated with the inactivated polio vaccine. Mm. That's the injectable one. And they have evidently had importation of these VDPV vac uh, polio vaccine cases. And because the population uh, is protected against uh, paralysis, there have been no cases of paralytic polio, but there's obviously infected people in the community and they are um, transmitting um, this polio virus onwards. Now, it would be okay if everybody was vaccinated but there are people in these communities, as there are in South Africa, who have not taken the vaccine um, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. One of them is a vaccine uh, unavailability. So a mom goes to the clinic and the clinic says, sorry, we're out of stock today. Please come back tomorrow. 
and they don't come back. Now that the health department is working their level best to prevent. But there are other reasons for vaccination where families um, either forget to take their little ones for vaccine or they choose not to have them vaccinated against something like polio because they say polio is so rare. Well, the problem is that if the polio virus is circulating as it is evidently in New York and a child is not vaccinated, if they are unlucky enough to come across that vaccine, they can develop paralytic polio. Now, paralytic polio is absolutely devastating. Firstly, it has a high mortality rate, but worse, if one survives, um, one can be left with a permanent residual paralysis of arms and legs, um, and this can cause lifelong deformities and um, lifelong complications. Um, Post-paralytic syndrome is one of them. So it um, is not good news um, mm. for the world, nor is it good news for the global polio eradication uh, program, um, which hoped to eradicate polio uh, in, in the early 2000s. Um, however, it is a call for us all to make sure that we are up to date with our vaccines. It's never too late to vaccinate. If a person, yep. uh, if a, a caregiver or a parent realizes that their um, child is not up to date with vaccine or they've been hesitant and unsure about whether giving their child a vaccine is the right thing to do, it's not too late uh, to go to the clinic and to explain um, the story and um, the clinic will, without questions um, and without judgment, um, offer offer the, the caregiver and the little one um, a vaccine against polio. Mm. So you've just spoken about the United Kingdom as an example and the fact that a lot of the population received the injectable vaccine, which is inactive, and that obviously still exposes them uh, to getting polio and, of course, uh, uh, giving it to, to others around them. But interest, I just want to get a, a sense from you. What is the situation in South Africa in terms of our vaccination rates here um, and whether there is enough education to encourage parents to make sure that their children are getting the vaccine? vaccine uh, uh, when necessary? So thank you for that question. Um, a vaccination coverage survey was conducted um, in towards the end of 2019, just before COVID uh, broke out. Um, and this was a household survey. So it was a door-to-door -door survey done um, across the entire country, not sampling every household, but representative households so that a good understanding of the vaccination coverage could be uh, reached. And um, across South Africa, about 75%, between 75 and 80% of children are vaccinated. Now, if you think that uh, in South Africa, we have about a million, just over a million children born every year, if only 75% of children are vaccinated, that leaves 250,000 children every year that are unvaccinated. Um, the study also looked at uh, the reasons why uh, children were not vaccinated, and it was about half-half. Half was the responsibility of the health system, so for example, vaccine stockouts, like I mentioned. The other half was most likely responsibility of the caregiver. So uh, the caregiver had not um, for various uh, reasons, um, had made a decision um, or had not gotten round to um, taking the child for vaccine. So um, together, South Africa can do it. We can make the system stronger. Um, the health system, the health authorities are aware of the importance of uh, vaccination and the need um, to provide um, consistent and regular care and to follow up uh, with moms if there are stockouts. Stockouts happen. Um, however, um, it's also a teamwork. It's, it's the responsibility of caregivers to make sure that um, their little ones are vaccinated. Okay. So if I just may make a clarification, you mentioned that the injectable vaccine is inactive. Um, what that means is that um, it's not a live vaccine. It can't uh, replicate or grow in the body. It's a, it's a dead vaccine. So that's what we mean when it's we say it's inactive. It's a very active vaccine. It promotes good, strong immunity. Mm. And if a person has this inactivated vaccine, they most definitely will not get symptoms of paralytic polio.
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your time and for providing that clarity that is specialist pathologist Dr. Kerrigan McCarthy speaking to us on uh, uh, pol uh, polio week um, and the fact that it's important to get their parents uh, of young children to get their children vaccinated uh, with the vaccine uh, just to prevent them from suffering the debilitating effects of uh, that uh, disease should they catch it.